Yeah. And I'm competing against them, and like I know they're doping. I'm gonna call them a bitch. Are you gonna say that to yourself? No. You're not willing to put in that work. You're not willing to put in those hours. Get the fuck out of here. There are, I mean, I would take a piss test every day if they would let me. I would have no problem doing that. The 50 men who are out there, 47 or 48 men who compete in the games this, this year, I don't believe any of them were on steroids. Do you agree with me? Uh, no. Hi. So the topic at hand is, I'm just going to hold this then, CrossFit and steroids. And the reason that I'm talking about it is I put out an Instagram AMA, the Ask Me Anything. And the Ask Me Anything was a hit with the question being, how many CrossFit Games athletes do you think are on PEDs? My response, we'll talk about later. However, I kind of popped off on it and I got a lot of feedback. I had the posts, posts, because I kept going because people wanted to know more. I had a lot of shares, more than anything I'd ever had. And the feedback that I was getting from people, which I'm not going to name their names or anything, was either supportive or I don't know why more people don't talk about it or I didn't know that or how do you know so much about that or are you on them? All of which I'm going to try to cover in this video. So, why was it all at once? And it's because within the space, I'm sure you may or you should know that tight knit community where everyone's all super supportive and anything that's negative can't be talked about. And steroids are something where everyone has this super bad opinion of them. And they're not bad. I, I know that they're used to help gentlemen in their forties and fifties and they get to be more they get to be more like twenty year olds again. And that's a great thing. Um they might have had really hard lives and maybe they're just not optimal, uh, optimally functioning as a male anymore and they needed some help. Now, there are also people who are in their 20s who need that. And I knew somebody in high school who needed some help from the doctor, some exogenous help. And that individual was shorter, less muscular, not developing, and all those things helped him do it. So there are good things that come from it and they're not all bad. And it's very much a media portrayed deal where it's like, hey, this stuff is bad. It's going to kill you and you're going to die early. And if you do it one time, you're going to rage kill somebody. And it's not really how it works from what I've seen. So I have seen it. I know people who have done them. And I know both the, like the older, the younger, and the athlete who have done them. And I've been in the space for so long where the first exposure to somebody who did them was... 18, 17, and at that point in time, hey, Andrew, you want some? I said no. And you know why I said no? Because they're fucking scary. And in the, uh, the the media worked that to that extent. They're, they say, hey, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. And I know with my personality being as addictive as you can imagine, like, look at this place. This is the, the gym that was molded through my obsession with exercise and through my obsession with exercise you look at caffeine addiction and you look at how i've avoided hard drugs like i won't touch cocaine or ecstasy or any of that because i'm afraid i might like it too much and if i like it too much then it's just never gonna go anywhere like caffeine try to get rid of it for a bit because you know there's bad positives and negatives of having too much caffeine i'm like all right let's see if i can get off of it and i couldn't get off of it so stayed on it did I touch steroids? Have I touched steroids? No, because they're they're scary. I don't want to try to come off of them. I don't think I will because I, from what I've seen from the people who have done them, it's super duper cool when they do it right. Like the uh, doctor prescribed in their 40s and their 50s and that guy who I talked about from high school, they are all healthy as can be. They're getting their blood work done regularly. They have the doctors prescribing what they should be doing and they they have like the oversight of it. And then I've also seen individuals who do it themselves and they're doing it healthfully. But then the individuals who I saw when I was in like the 17, 18 and periodically within the space that is CrossFit who I've seen do it, there are the drawbacks that come from the addiction and the, they are an, uh, an abusive substance. So I like caffeine, it's 
you can ask any of my buddies like, hey, and this guy can't touch cocaine because so they don't t- don't touch steroids either. So there's your answer to that one. Uh, I also haven't spoken about them all that much, and I know so much about them. It comes from the pandemic, from COVID. So when COVID struck and I sold my stake in the gym, I had a lot of free time. And it was about time where I kind of dove into it because it's not something where you can just click on a YouTube video and on the YouTube video, it's going to say, this is who takes steroids and this is how they get away from it and CrossFit and steroids. And because no one wants to talk about it from what I already spoke of, which was it's not status quo. It's like, don't touch that. You don't want to touch that because you're going to get in trouble. And I don't care if I get in trouble anymore get me in trouble. I want to get in trouble. I tell everybody, tell the world, this is how it works. So when I was in COVID, I kind of like dove and I dove and I dove and they say, here's the dark web. And it's really hard to find this stuff because it's so buried by the media and the, it's going to kill you that I also already spoke of that it's underneath all of the top headlines and you can find stuff, a lot of stuff. And there are a couple of people who are super informative in YouTube, but they're not CrossFitters. They're bodybuilders and I don't know if you know who Derek the more plates more dates guy or Greg Doucette and in their earlier days they spoke a lot about it and how it works and they're very informative and a lot of what they speak of um, they speak at like a one-on-one level as if you were going to take a college course you can also find in the literature it's all kind of through the bodybuilding world so William Lewin wrote a book just called Anabolics and it's got an 11th edition to it you can't buy it anymore I believe he wrote it in the 90s, and it stretched out towards the middle thousands, and I've read the book. There's a PDF of it. If you want it, you can go find it on the internet. Look up Anabolics by William Lewin, and it's like a 200-page, 11th edition book that'll go into uh, the ins and outs of all of this stuff. Um, Throughout all this stuff, William Lewin found out a lot of his information from a guy who he met in prison, and his name is escaping me, but this guy whom he met in prison was in California, would bounce back and forth from Mexico, and he would be a drug cartel, steroid drug cartel. And I really, maybe I'll just plug his name. I'm going to look it up, and I'm going to soup zip it in here later. Blah, there's his name. Um, but William Lewin, his book on anabolics, is a lot of information steroid.com would you believe it or not there's a steroid.com go to that website and you can find out a lot and somewhere later in this video i'm going to plug in something on drug clearance times and how that works and how it's used to skirt and be a clean athlete although you may or may not be and then the last piece of the puzzle is anyone who wants to consider themselves educated on anything needs to advise someone who knows more than you which is what i did so i found somebody who is rather well educated in the world of anabolics. And that individual I've had a handful of phone calls with, and I just want to pick his brain. I want to know how things go, things that you might not read on the internet here in the media. And through that, I feel as if I am about as educated as you can get because you're not going to get it anywhere else. You're not going to be able to go to school for this you're not going to learn this even at the doctorate level because you don't prescribe them. I mean, people don't do trenbolone, and that's something that you. I just said that word, and you might not have any idea what it is. You might be rather well educated in the medical field, and you might not know what trenbolone is, and you may know it from a meme on the internet, and that's it. So let's just keep going. The question that sparked all of this was, what percentage of CrossFit Games athletes do you believe are on PEDs? PEDs is a broad, PEDs is a broad, broad spectrum, but generally you can assume that that means that they are not allowed. I sp- said 75 to 90% of them. And rather than name people, I'm going to define avatars. An avatar is just kind of an idea of an individual, male, female, and then what do they look like? Not what they look like to the human eye, although that does be that is taken into account. But what are they all about? How did they get there? What do they look like in the off season? That deal. So the people whom you should believe are not on performance enhancing drugs are those who 
are on the younger side because they can recover a lot. They can recover like crazy. They are rather mobile. They have a plasticity to the way that they move. They don't have that like super hard body to them that you see on a bodybuilder on stage. Think Ronnie Coleman and think how he moves around. He moves like a rock, rock lobster. The second you move and you're rigid, it's might be because that muscle came on at a rate in which you're also not training it to its full uh, range of motion, which will cause you to be moving against the grain, which is rough. On the female end of the spectrum, you, you got to look at elite level gymnasts. You got to look at elite level track and field athletes. And although those people are also dirty, you look at the elite level bodybuilders and you look at women's physique and the closer that a female physique is to a, an elite level bodybuilder, the same goes for males, the more likely it is that they're using some sort of uh, help exogenous something the biggest giveaway of the females is their facial structure so you see my face i mean i don't have the biggest face it's like a little thing here the wider a face gets the bigger it gets it's called a, a masculinization and it's got to do with the anabolic androgenic ratio which is something that every single steroid has now testosterone has a even ratio of the two anabolic androgenic and testosterone is just the father steroid of everything. Um, it's in male bodies and female bodies. It's there. And there are Franken steroids that are higher on one end and lower on the other end. So what anabolic is, is it's muscle building. And what androgenic is, is it's masculinizing. So because testosterone is like the dominant male gene, they do things to guys and they make them look like guys. Females don't want that. So females want the anabolic. They want the muscle. They want the... The, the benefits of having the steroid, but they don't want the androgenic. They don't want to be down here. So there are steroids out there that are good for the female. And they're usually Franken steroids and they're usually pretty easy to find. Okay. Talk about more, more of that later, but that is just an appearance deal. Now you can also think of that's the bodybuilding spectrum idea. I touched on that in one of my posts. Numbers versus power lifters. So there are very clear distinctions in the power lifting world of drugs versus not drug tested, drug testing versus non drug testing divisions. And within those, you can see the numbers. It's like you can see the world records, you can see how they do. You can see where their numbers go. With the, with the drug tested people, you see one of these because they go on, they come off. They need to come off. You can't just be on all the time or you die. That's how that works. Uh, not always, maybe you're just on all the time and then you die at 40. That's up to you, your life, YOLO. Now the natural people, it's always one of these. So when you think about CrossFit people, you can think they post a lot of their lifts. The best you'll notice don't post their training lifts. Why? Well, I don't want people to know what I'm doing. It's super special, super secret. Now I'm not name and names because they all do it none of them really post their stuff now you'll see or along there somewhere that there are people who hit huge lifts out of competition come to competition don't hit anything near those lifts uh and there you go why why don't they do it well because they're probably trying to do something i'll talk about later which is clearing that and as they clear they get weaker natural people don't have that issue money is the biggest thing here if you don't really understand that the world is ruled by the dollar then you're going to have a rude awakening at some point but the sooner you understand it the better crossfit is a business crossfit has the crossfit games which brings people into the affiliates they make money from the games why would they put this thing on if they're not making money from it because people like it you think oh people like it true for the crossfit games crossfit wants to make money they're a business crossfit within their business very much like the football players in the nfl and the baseball players in the mlb they don't want to screw their people over because it screws them over so when baseball went through the uh lockout in the 90s like 97 and Barry Bonds, Sammy Sosa, and Mark McGuire come out swinging, bashing home runs, and pulling people back into the stadiums. MLB is an organization. Shh, be quiet, because 
they're helping us. We're not going to throw our throw them against the wall. Now, what happens is Barry Bonds is a dick. And because Barry Bonds is a dick, people started like throwing stuff at him and be like, look at what he's got in his locker. He's doing it in front of all of us. Belko is a book I read. Bel- the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the whatever book about Belko and how Barry Bonds and that entire company, the, oh my God, I wish I prepared for this more because it would have been better. Uh, but there's a guy who ran the ZMA company and that's a whole nother story. Never mind. But Barry Bonds was the figurehead of the sport at the time. Now he's being thrown under the bus because now he's had nothing to do with baseball. And he already got them their money. Lance Armstrong is very similar in cycling. How many of you watched anything to do with cycling until Lance Armstrong and his Live Strong bracelets and his cancer support were the big thing? Like No one knew any about the Tour de France unless you were a hardcore cyclist. Now it was mainstream, and Lance Armstrong was the reason, so... The cycling organization isn't going to throw him under the bus. And you know why they did? Because he was a dick. And because he was a dick, then all the cyclists ganged up on him and got him in trouble. These two people are the most drug-tested people on the planet. You can look it up. Lance Armstrong would be tested weekly, and he would get away with it. And why would he get away with it? Again, we're going to talk about that later. But Barry Bonds, Lance Armstrong, being shielded by their organization. So you would have to figure that CrossFit as a brand, which is much smaller and would get kicked much harder from kicking out, like getting in trouble, all of their people, you could, you should see using some common sense. And don't just say, Andrew, you're a hater, because that's just like the off-the-cuff thing that people want to say. You're a hater. You've never been to the CrossFit game. Duh, you wish you could do that. You just don't try hard enough. If you knew how hard I tried, and some of you do, you wouldn't be saying that. There was a very compact part of my life where I hear Matt Frazier talk about what you like, Hey, I did that. You're better than me. Cool. And I respect that. Good for you. You're better than me. More talented, mentally stronger, whatever it might be. But I did try really hard. There are a lot of people who try really hard. And it's not just the fact that people try harder or are more gifted. It's the fact that there are some help. There is some help from the powers above. We'll move on after this. Progression and regression is the big thing that you want to look at when it comes to whether or not someone's using PEDs. Instagram is the best thing for this. Some people have been on the app since 2012 or 2010. And it's a little scroll and you'll scroll and go, wow, this is what this person looked like when they were 25. And at the young age of 32, they've thrown on 30 pounds of lean muscle. It's like, wow. How did you do that? What is your secret? Where did you go? Who coached you? You did something. You had some, some, you had some help, some exogenous help, some, some PEDs. Usually, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say I'm right 100% of the time, but I'm going to say that I'm 99% of the time right, where you can just like, oh, this is what you looked like at the age of 22. This is what you looked like at the age of 30. This is now... Sometimes you have people, you can look at them, usually when they're in their teenage years, 16, 17, 18. You can see what they're working with. You can see this is what you look like here in this chunk of time, maybe two years later, this chunk of time. And if it's like a gradual build to a point, you got it. You're good. Now, it's very and almost incredibly rare to impossible that you're going to see somebody who in their mid to upper 20s is just turning into a god almost impossible you don't know any there is a test done with height muscle mass ratios given out and like the likelihood that you were then on steroids and it was something along the lines of if you are a five foot nine male and you weigh a hundred and or 200 to 205 pounds then the likelihood that you are a natural person when you have a body fat at this level is extremely low body fat was something around 10%. So if you're 5'9", 205, and you had 10% body fat, unlikely, super unlikely. So you parlay that with the images that you see the first people getting to this level all of a sudden, and all of a sudden you go, huh, progression, regression. And I say regression because a lot of the times, like I said, you don't want to die. So you'll peak to a point and then you'll come down. And it's not 
intracellular water, but it, it does help that some people have more water in them, some people have less. It's got a lot to do with the fact that they no longer have the high levels of whatever in their body, so they regulate a little bit. Sometimes they'll dip below. Sometimes they'll 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 look like this is a natural person, and then they'll get way up here, and then they'll dip below because your body wants to find uh, hormonal like neutral. They want to find it. it. It's what your body does. It's how it operates. You drink too much water, you pee. You have too much salt, you got to get rid of it. Dehydrated. So it happens the same way with steroids. Performance at competition suffering is the biggest clear as day deal here because the way CrossFit works is you're in your gym. You're in your gym. You're in your gym. You're in your gym. You do the open. You, this year you do the online qualifier, and then you go to the games. You'll see athletes who will be very good, very good, and then where the hell did you go? And it's because when you go somewhere, there's a good chance that you might be drug tested. So if you are afraid of that, you'd – Get rid of the drugs. We'll talk about that. That's cool. That's coming up. That's in the next section. You get rid of the drugs, and then all of a sudden you can't perform, but you're still there. You got the exposure. You're like, ah, oh, you know, cool, whatever. I'll move on with my life. That's a thing as well. We're going to start talking about Ricky Garrard, the guy who took the bullet. Ricky Garrard came onto the scene. He was a good CrossFitter. His brother's a good CrossFitter. He's from Australia, he's talented, and he got thrown under the bus for taking a SARM. Uh, SARM is a performance-enhancing drug. Yes, it's not a steroid. No. He, had ta- he was taking RAD140, he was taking GW50156, which is a PPAR agonist, which is not a SARM, really. So people say he was on GW, he was on Endurable. It's a SARM, it's not a SARM. It helps you metabolize energy better, so it makes you breathe better, which people like it. It's soup. It'll work, but it's not a SARM. Red 140 is a SARM, and we talked about the anabolic androgenic ratio, and it's not very androgenic. It's very anabolic, and it is completely new. Steroids have been along for a long, long, long time. 1920, 1930, they were used by the Russians in the Olympics and they would dominate and there's all of this history on them. With that history comes notes on half-lives. And I talked about steroid.com and it's as easy as going to steroid.com. You look up the half-life. What is a half-life? So let's say, and we're going to use this in units that make sense to everybody. So let's say you have a hundred steroids in your body. Uh, you have a hundred in your body. Now let's say this steroid has a half-life of one week. So after one week, you're going to have 50 units of steroid in your body. And then in another week, you're going to have 25 units of steroid in your body. And in another week, you're going to have 12.5 units of steroid in your body. So it's just like going down. Half, 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 half life. It goes down half a week. Now, not every single one has a one week. Some have a one day. So let's say you had 100 units of steroid in your body. One day later, it would be 50. The next day, it would be 25. The next day later, it would be 12.5. That's how half-lifes work. Now, the ones that you'll want to take if you're trying to pass a drug test are the ones with very short half-lifes. And you know what you do? Let's say, hey, I'm competing in the CrossFit Games, and I'm going to do that in June. So through December, January, February, you're taking some of the short half-life. You stop taking it in February, and by the time the games roll around, you're good to go. You're not – you could – now, this is the Franken steroids. I told you about those, the ones with like the skewed anabolic androgenic ratios because females don't want to look like dudes. Dudes might want the benefits of having Franken steroids. Franken steroids will do something for you that the non Franken steroids won't. And I'm, this is something I've never heard. I made up Franken steroids. Now, testosterone isn't a Franken steroid. There are half lives associated with testosterone, but that's not because they're made up. It's because they're utilized by pharmaceutical companies for those people I spoke of that are in their 40s and 50s. So if you're 40 and you are a guy and you want to be a healthy young male type guy, then you'll use something with a long half-life. So you don't have to stick a needle in your butt every day. Maybe you do it once a week. Sometimes you can do it every two weeks, but it becomes less of an impact on your life. So the names of those are... And enthate, cypionate, those are the longer ones. Then there's a propionate, and then there's an acetate. The acetate ester is almost water, so it doesn't really do much. What that does is imagine that you're a testosterone, you're flowing around in the blood, and then you've got to, like, shed skin. And 
when you add the esters, you're shed, you're like a snake. You want to disappear as a testosterone to get out of your body and become used, then you become a shorter half-lifed testosterone. You go to a drug test, testosterone is there. It's in your body. So let's say you're Ricky Garrard. You're Ricky Garrard and you're on red 140. Take a, take a P test. You pee in it. This test is looking for red 140. It's on the ban list. So drug-free sport, which CrossFit uses, is looking for that because it's banned. They know. It only knows what it knows. So let's say Ricky Garrard had someone make something up, completely random, never been heard before. They're not going to find it. That's something people are doing. So they won't get tested. They won't get ever. They're never going to pop for anything because there are chemists out there who are a step ahead of the organization. And when they're a step ahead of the organization, then the organization is just trying to play catch up. They'll find it. And then by the time that they find it and they test your favorite athlete, then that athlete's already on to the next best thing because that chemist has made something else. That's one way. Now, the other way is you do something that is bioidentical. So we talked about testosterone. It's something that men get, something that females have. Men want it because they want to be young again. So organizations use a ratio test on this because let's say they test me, Andrew Hiller, and they go, Andrew, pee in this cup. There is a level of epi testosterone in your body all the time, and nobody injects injects epi testosterone because it doesn't have any benefit to you. Now, people do inject testosterone because there's a huge benefit to you. It's the, the father steroid. Everybody wants it. So generally, I'm sitting right here, and they know that. This is a one-to-one ratio here. The testing body knows this. They have a leeway of all the way up to four-to-one. So let's say we'll go back to the hundreds. So let's say I have 100 things of testosterone in here. I have 100 things of epi testosterone in here. I can take 200 things of testosterone if I want. Do I pass? Yup. Two to one is good. I can take 300 things of testosterone. Am I good? You're still good. 300, 100, three to one is good. I can take 400 things of testosterone. I'm four times as good as I was here. Do I pass? You bet I pass. So I'm still like going along my merry way. I'm clean. I'm passing all the drug tests. I take five, 500 times, five to one. You, you buzz. I peed in the cup. They take it over and they go, guess what, Andrew? You failed the drug test. And I'd be like, I object. <laughs> I did not do that. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do it. And I go, okay, well, we're going to do a GCMS test. Gas chromography mass spectrometry test. They go one step deeper. So because it's testosterone, they need to make sure that it wasn't you. Maybe I'm a super freak. Maybe I'm God almighty. And I can make 500 to one types of testosterone in my body. So they got to like, look at it at uh, the level of the atom. They got to say, Hey, what is this thing? Where'd it come from? Yams are where testosterone is created from a plant. It's a plant source. Yams are popular, but they also have other types of sources they make testosterone from. So plant, a plant. Now that plant isn't supposed to be in here. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a person. I'm a human being. They're like, oh, you know what? You said you weren't on it, but audience says you are. You fail. Maury, Arr. you're out. I'm like, okay, well, you got me. <laughs> now, wait, we talked about that chemist that made Ricky Garrard's, I'm, I'm not meaning to say that, but whatever super athlete, they, they, they made their super athlete a thing that wasn't there. Now, let's say they make them a testosterone derivative that comes from a, a cholesterol source, from an animal source. That is undetectable. So year round, so-and-so or whomever can be taking however many hundreds of testosterone, as long as it's from an animal source, and they can't say that it didn't come from this animal or that animal. So like, there's that animal over there. Give me your testosterone Blech. in me. Now, it's not like you have a name tag on it. It's like, hey, this is this is Andrew's testosterone, and that's cow's testosterone. Like cow. Now, if it's plant versus human, it's like, well, plant human. Those aren't the same. They're different. Now, animal, animal. You know, no. So that, in my opinion, is the way that most people are getting around the test. 
Now it's probably Franken steroids that are created by the super doctor for people who don't even know, or it's the animal to animal testosterone creation. The plant one is cheap. The plant one is the one that are given out by the pharmaceutical companies because the pharmaceutical companies want to make the money. The animal one isn't as cheap. There aren't as many animals as there are plants. You can't just grow an animal. I mean, you could, but it's not as, as cheap. So most testosterone sources are plant, which is why they look for plant. And they also are trying to get you in trouble. There's only one person who's ever been caught for taking testosterone at the elite level. His name is Audrey Gannon. He's from Russia. He went and he won Linda at the 2018 regionals. Lifts, even as importantly, no, no reps. Andre Ganin, I don't know if you could do any better than that. 12.08 to take the event with ease. And he's the only person who got caught using testosterone sipionate, which is a long ester testosterone. Now, you are fucking kidding me if you're going to tell me that he's the only dude at the level that is taking some sort of testosterone. When you look at the world, you can walk into a gym anywhere and you better damn well bet that there are... <sighs> I don't know if there's a hundred dudes in the weight room, then maybe 10 of them are using it. So they're just doing it recreationally. Now imagine if they had the ability to make some money doing it. This might be me being, uh, what is it called? Pessimistic. But I just feel as if I have a pretty good feel for it. Now if there's 10, 20 dudes doing it, then there are also three to five females doing it because females can also do the whole animal testosterone versus clearance time deal. And think of the best looking girl that you know, who you've known your whole life, and they work out a bunch. Now imagine the elite CrossFit people, and they look like damn gods. It's not just by the chance that this happens. <laughs> I got going. All right. The last thing that you want to talk about is growth hormone. It's produced while you're sleeping. If you don't sleep, you don't produce growth hormones. So they say you need eight hours a night. You want to look young, blah, 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 blah. All of the uh, actors and actresses in Hollywood are taking it because it's expensive. So because it's expensive, really the only people who have access to it are the people who are making a bunch of money when they're doing the sport. <sighs> it's also bioidentical, which means that it's hard to find. It's also got a very short half-life, which makes it even harder to find. The test is very expensive, which makes it unreasonable to even try to find it so let's say you have a field of 80 people at the crossfit games and the test for growth hormone is two thousand dollars per person to do it now all of a sudden you're looking at spending sixteen thousand dollars to test for growth hormone when all they had to do to make sure that they couldn't get caught was stop taking it a couple days before then you're really looking at something where it's not worth crossfit's time to even test for it and to go a step further, let's say that they do find someone taking testosterone. Let's say it's the figurehead of the sport who's been in the limelight for ever so many years. And they're like, oh, they got them getting growth hormone. No, we don't want to talk about it. We're not going to blush under the rug. And we can do that because we have our own governing body, that being drug-free sport. We're not using WADA. We're not using uh, USADA to say, hey, this is everything that we found. And there you go. There's a little bit of a little bit of something, and I'm sure that I can go on forever and ever about all of this. The deal with it is, I've done a lot of research. It's been hard, and I think that people need to know some of this stuff. It's not. It should be clear as day. Really, once you know the amount of stuff that I know about performance-enhancing drugs. And once you take the wool off of your eyes and you say, why wouldn't this be a thing? And you stop thinking so optimistically of a lot of things. It becomes pretty clear. I can say I've probably put hundreds, if not a thousand or so hours of research into this, just reading articles and studies, the studies that'll say things along the lines of what I told you, which is the units you can take and still pass a drug test. And hey, here's a study of 20 guys out there and they're all gonna take 300 milligrams of testosterone and then a week. And they're gonna then take a drug test in three weeks and they're all gonna be on it. And 
when of those 20 people, 18 of them pass, and they are all injecting testosterone, but they passed the test that CrossFitters are put through, and they're literally putting needles in their butts that morning, and they're still passing. You read that stuff, and you go, all right, <laughs> shoot. <laughs> so I hope that this opens a couple of eyes, and I, I can even link that study in here if you want to read it. I don't know. Comment. Do you want to hear more? Do you want to know more? Hopefully, I've just presented well in a way that you can think about it. I got nothing else. Andrew Hiller. Bye. I got to talk a little bit about training camps, locations, and the athletes in which are all apparently all just from the same area. The There are those people who do accident assessments and through their accident assessments say what's the likelihood of this and what's the likelihood of that and the odds are so astronomically small now unless they've traveled and they've all come from different spots then you should you have to assume that when there's a spot in the middle of nowhere and all of the fittest people on earth happen to be right there and they say something's in the water or that coach is so great that coach had to have brought up all these people and there is a little bit of that because I saw it when I was at CrossFit Alpha Dog and I was there and we had our team and people did want to come, but we weren't the fittest people in the world. We had a great vibe going. We had a good community and we were all having a good time working out. You had to assume that maybe there's this at our level and there are a couple steps above it, but the places I'm talking about are way the hell up here. And all of a sudden you have the fittest people you'll ever find and they're all in one spot. And you got to say, what is the secret that they're talking about? And what do they know? Who are they working with? Talked about the chemist. Like, there's a chemist out there. Like, well, maybe they got someone and they're in their back pocket that's helping them all out. Uh, what sort of MDA did they sign? Because that's something that, you know, people do. It's like, you, NDA, you can't just freaking talk about things. It's like, if you expose us, you owe us your freaking life. You're going to die. $500,000 if you tell them our secrets. Or you can't work out with us. You can't sit with us. You can't work out with us if you tell our secrets. It happens everywhere. And it's another one of those. You need to be a little bit more eye-opened about certain situations.